I think first we should begin with definitions. And it's important to begin with definitions because the topic today is mythology today, not mythology yesterday. And there's a difference between mythology yesterday, there's a difference between mythology today. You know, in, um, when I was in school, in nursery, there was, um, about like, that's about over 40 years ago, I was taught a nursery rhyme which says, when you are happy and you are gay, clap your hands. You remember this? Mm -hmm. yes. So all the old people will nod their head, young people will not know this. Because yeah, today children are not taught this song. Parents get very upset. <laughs> because you are not allowed to say, I'm happy and I'm gay, clap your hands. It has a very different meaning. So in the last 40 years, the meaning of the word gay has shifted. Yesterday, it meant happiness. Today, it refers to a homosexual man. So meanings change over time. And therefore, in Sanskrit, when somebody uses the word itihas, in Hindi, somebody uses the word itihas, a word which is used 2000 years ago and a word which is used in Hindi today, it need not mean the same thing. Sanskrit word Nyaya used 2000 years ago and a Hindi word Nyaya used today has very different meanings. It is very important to understand meaning. A hundred years ago, the world was ruled by kings and empires, emperors. So we would be part of an empire, British Empire, Habsburg Empire. There was just one vague republic somewhere or two, France or England, but generally there were empires, kingdoms. And in such a place where there is a monarch, the king decides what is true and what is false. It is a binary world. The king's truth is the truth and everything else is false. So when the British came to India and they travelled the world, the Europeans came to the world, they introduced a new word called mythology. Basically, the truth of other cultures was mythology, the truth of their culture was the truth. So, Raja ka sach sach, Baki ka sach jhut. So, the word myth has been used synonymously with fiction. But that was 100 years ago. Today, the word myth has a very different meaning. We live in democratic societies. No single authority can decide what the truth is. Not the politician, not the scientist, not the priest, not the philosopher, not the academician, not the devotee, not the revolutionary. Everybody has their own notion of what truth should be. And so, we distinguish between fact which is everybody's truth, fiction, which is nobody's truth, and myth, which is somebody's truth. So it's a very different definition. And one has to be completely aware of these definitions when we are using words. Myth is somebody's truth. If I believe I live one life and at the end of one life I am going to be answerable to a God who is going to judge me and decide whether I am going to be in heaven or hell for the rest of eternity, that is my truth. You may not agree with it. You will say, no, I believe in rebirth. Ek jan ke baad, dusra jan, uske baad, das jan, fir pachas jan, hota hi rahega. Who is right? One life followed by judgment by God, many lives with different lifetimes, infinite lifetimes. Which truth is the truth? What did 
did Buddha believe in? Did Buddha believe in God? When asked about God, he said, I am not interested in the person who shot the poisonous arrow. I am interested in searching for the doctor. <laughs> he was not interested in the question. So we must understand that different people look at the world differently. And every culture has a different view of the world. A Bheel tribal man looks at the world differently. A Gond looks at it differently. The Zulu look at it differently. The Brahmin looks at it differently. The Christian looks at it differently. The secular person looks at it differently. The atheist looks at it differently. Everybody has their own notion of reality. The tragedy is when you start believing your truth is the truth. <coughs> when you start behaving like a monarch and you remove the talwar and says, if you don't agree with me, I'm going to cut your head off. You will find many young people like this on Twitter. <laughs> because we don't want to listen. We don't, can't accept the idea that other people look at the world differently. And therefore, the old world, 100 years ago, was the world of vivad, argument. In argument, I am proving I am right or you are right. Vivad. And I am interested in trouncing you and defeating you and triumphantly declaring my view is the truth. Those who are interested in, alt in listening to other people will engage in Samavad. Samavad. Your truth and my truth. I come from one set of experiences. You come from one set of experiences. How do I discover your truth and how does your truth influence my truth? Let's have a conversation. Let's be part of an Upanishad. That is a very different approach. I am not interested in argumentative Indians. That leads to violence. I don't think it leads to intelligent discussion. Invariably in an argument, the ego will appear. And defeat becomes more important than knowledge. But in Samavad, we discover new ideas. Mythology allows us to discover other ideas. How do different people look at the world? So today, mythology is the subjective truth of a people communicated through stories, symbols and rituals. Everybody has a different truth. They communicate it through stories, symbols and rituals. Mythology can have many gods. Polytheistic mythology. Mythology can have one god. Monotheistic mythology. Mythology can have no god. Atheistic mythology. We often forget that ideas like equality and justice don't exist in nature. We want to believe in them. It's a belief system. We believe it will make us civilized, decent human beings. I can't see justice. I believe in it. Just as I can't see God, but I believe in God. Some people said God is just. Others said I can't see God. Therefore, the st I, shall, I can see the state. The state must be just. God disappoints, state disappoints. And you wonder where to go. So the world of mythology allows you to see how people see the world. Hum darshan kaise karte hai dunya ka? That word darshan is very powerful. How do different people see the world? And when you start reading stories, all stories are not mythological. One must distinguish between parables or fables from mythology. Parable has trying to convince you of a particular idea. It has a moral ending. Hitopadesha is a parable, moral stories. 
what the parent think is good this is good jatakas are mythology because they are trying to tell you how to look at life life does not have a beginning or an end if you read the jatakas they are 550 lives of the buddha before he became the buddha the purpose is very different it is to establish a world view or a paradigm duniya ko dekhne ka drishtikon it's a framework not a prescription parables are prescriptive to this don't do this they exist in a framework jatakas creates a framework ramayan mahabharat puran creates a framework hitopadesha doesn't create a framework it is important to appreciate frameworks the big frameworks of the world are there is one life one way of living life the right way of living life and if you don't live the right way you will die and maybe go to hell it's one way of looking at the world one life the other big paradigm is there are many lives many lives one after the other after the other after the other how is it told for example we are told that one day when ram is the king of ayodhya the gods come to him and tell him that it is time for you to die so ram says i have done my duty it is time to die let yamraj come and take me and the gods say the yamraj the god of death cannot claim your life because hanuman has blocked the door and he will not let death enter he wants you to live forever and ram says okay so he pulls a ring from his hand and he drops it on the floor and he tells hanuman hanuman can you pick it up and hanuman immediately goes looking for it can't find it realizes it has slipped in a crack on the floor so he reduces himself in size to the size of a fly he enters that crack and discovers it's not a crack but a tunnel and the tunnel leads to the land of serpents and in the land of serpents he meets vasuki and vasuki tells him yes yes the ring is over here please find it on that mountain and hanuman goes to that mountain and discovers it's not a mountain but a mountain of rings not the same ring has been there a whole pile of mountains the entire mountain of ram's ring and he looks at vasuki and says where is the ring he said all of them are ram's ring he said all of them are you is this some xerox machine happening over here and vasuki says did you think there is only one ram you see in every kalp in one life cycle of the universe there are four yugas krita treta dwapara kali in the second quarter which is known as treta a ring falls from bhuloka to nagaloka a monkey follows it and ram up there dies as many rings so many rams have come so many hanumans have come and hanuman looks at vasuki and says so i am not special he says no what has happened has happened before इसके पहले भी हुआ है इसके पहले भी हुआ है इसके पहले भी हुआ है राम आते हैं जाते हैं this is a framework a framework to remember when you watch the news and you see someone taking charge and deciding that i will change the world and your heart trembles <coughs> when you see a hitler rising up you say you remember the story it says hitler aata hai jata hai nothing lasts forever like a wave it will come and go kings come and go raja aate hai jate hai राम आते हैं जाते हैं जाते हैं आते हैं इट विल नेवर एंड दिस इज अ डिफरेंट वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट द वर्ल्ड देर इज नो हैप्पीली एवर आफ्टर ओवर हियर देर इज नो हैप्पी एंडिंग देर इज नो सैड एंडिंग वेर डज रामायण एंड यू कांट बिकॉज इट कीप्स रेकरिंग राइट सो इट कांट एंड Ram goes Krishna comes Krishna goes Ram comes Ram comes Krishna goes it never ends sanatan 
timeless, forever. This is a framework of thinking. It is never a happy ending. Every time people get married, they are told life will be better after this. <laughs> Reality dawns, but when their children are getting married, they will tell the same thing. Bridegrooms come, bridegrooms go. They come and go, they come and go. In every wedding, we hope for happiness. There is no happily ever after. This paradigm comes to us from fairy tales. Fairy tales come from Europe. Europe, for a very long time, was based on Christianity. And the idea of the promised land, one day you will no longer be a slave in Egypt. One day you will be in the promised land. One day you will be free. You will have dignity. You will have everything that you desire. Sab khatam ho jayega. And you will return to Eden. You have fallen and you shall return. Everything will one day be perfect. That's a very different paradigm. Two different ways of looking at the world. Now if you tell me which is right, I will give you the Indian head shake. <laughs> <laughs> this is right. This is right. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. This. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. This. <laughs> Only when you do this, you have a diverse ecosystem. <laughs> Only then will you understand diversity. That different people look at the world differently. And once you understand Hindu mythology, Jain mythology, Buddhist mythology, and then you compare it with Christian mythology, and Islamic mythology, and Jewish mythology, and secular mythology, People get very upset. They say, what do you mean? There is no such thing as secular mythology. And I'm like, no, if you're a human being, you live in myth. Because you live with a world view. You have assumptions. You don't like the word myth? Let's use the word assumption. You have an assumption about life. If I do good things, good things will happen to me. If I study hard, I will be successful in life. There is no guarantee. But you have to tell that to the child. No, otherwise it will stop studying. <laughs> you can't say, nee, padai karega to chalega. I remember many young people say, Sir, the most successful people in the world are dropouts. And I'm like, does it mean you want to drop out of school? And that is going to increase your probability of success? Assumptions. What are your assumptions about life? How do you derive meaning in your life? Artha, Purushartha. If you live only once, the denominator of your life is one. And therefore the value of your life is the sum total of your achievements. If you live infinite lives, the denominator of your life is infinity. No matter what you do, the value of your life is zero. These are two very dramatically different ways of looking at the world. And people find it very difficult. That's why in India we'll never say, we'll say, unnis bis, sort of, maybe, chalega. People get very agitated. Because nowadays everybody has become IIT engineers, right? And I am, and everything is about an Excel sheet, and everything should plug and play. It doesn't happen. That is why master strokes and surgical strikes don't work. Because India is complex. Extremely complex. There is the world of diversity. The world of infinity. Buddha was looking at the world and he said, Ultimately, we are a set of ideas and one day these ideas come create the notion of self. When the ideas go away, the self goes away. <coughs> and he moved towards the idea of Shunya, zero. Nagarjun really, not Buddha. But the Hindus disagreed. They said, no, 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 it can't be zero. It is infinity, ananta. Shunya, ananta. 
zero infinity. Both concepts came from this land. <coughs> because the mythic framework of this land was very different. It is not the mythic framework of Greece and Rome. It is a very different mythic framework. Shunya Ananta. That's why God is called Ananta Vasudeva. Infinity. And Shankaracharya says, Jagat Mithya Brahma Satyam. And people says, oh, the world is a delusion and God is true. But these are, translations are wrong. Because Sanskrit is a complicated language. We are using English words very casually. Consider this. Instead of looking at truth as binary, truth as right and wrong or true and false, one and zero, look at it quantitatively. Limited truth and unlimited truth. So we all have access to truth, but we all have access to limited truth. Based on my experience, based on my learning, I know something. Based on your experience and your learning, you know something. When I do samvad, my limited truth expands. And how much can it expand? To infinity. Could it be the word satya means infinite truth? And mithya means limited truth? Then jagat mithya brahma satyam sounds very different. The world is full of limited truths. Only the divine knows limitless truth. Very different. Meaning is different. Power equations change. I don't say, Tera mithya hai, mera satya hai. I say, Tu bhi mithya mein hai, mein bhi mithya mein hai. Sab kuch mithya hai. That is why in India we say, Sab maya hai. We all have access to limited truths. But there is infinite truth out there somewhere. Ananta. Look at the way. It's a very different way. It makes you humble. It makes you curious. You are interested in other people's lives. You want to discover why they think differently. You will do Samvad and Upanishad all the time. You are not there to prove that I am right. Because the moment you say I am right, it's Ahankara. And once it's Ahankara, you have... In Indian philosophy, you have dropped down. Even, and that is a very different approach. It's a different approach which we are losing. I don't want to be right. I want to expand my thought at the end of a conversation. My mana has to expand. And I use the word brahmana to mean expansion of the mind. How much can it expand? Infinite. So my entire life I will not know everything. So even on the day before I die, I am still learning. Kshitij ke uspar. That concept, when you see the chakra symbol, which is there in Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism, chakra. What does chakra mean? Chakra refers to the horizon. Stand in the central place and look around you. If you have chaturmukha, if you have four heads, what would you see? You would see the horizon. If you would trace it, it was a circle. And that, that is so chakravarti. Someone who sees everything till the horizon. But as you rise higher and higher and higher and higher, the size of the circle keeps increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. How much? Till infinity. How is this explained in the form of a simple story? It's a folk tale. But not which has a prescription. I will tell you a folk tale from Rajasthan. It is also found in Nepal. It is also found in Odisha. It is also found in Andhra Pradesh. At the end of the Mahabharat war, the Pandavas have defeated the Kauravas. Gadadhari Bhim and Dhanurdhari Arjun are having an argument. And since nation wants to know, <laughs> who is the greatest warrior? So Bhim says, I am the greatest warrior because I have killed all the Kauravas. Arjun says, I am the greatest warrior. I am responsible for the defeat of Bhishma. I am responsible for the defeat of Karna. I am the greatest warrior. So they fight, fight, fight. And finally they go to Krishna. And Krishna says, why don't you ask the head on top of the hill? He says, what do you mean the head of the hill? He says, see, we are in the battlefield. 
the head is outside the battlefield at the edge of the battlefield there is a mountain on top of the mountain there is a tree on top of the tree there is a head he can see the battle very differently he has a better perspective jaake usko puchho so bhim and arjun go and talk to this head which has no body it's just a head and he says they ask bhim says am i the greatest arjun says am i the greatest and the head looks at them and says excuse me who are you <laughs> तुम हो कौन ही सेज डोंट यू नो आई एम भीम एंड ही सेज डोंट यू नो आई एम अर्जुन ही सेज आई एम सॉरी ही सेज डोंट यू नो वी आर द पांडवस इज हु आर द पांडवस हु आर द कौरवस फ्रॉम माय पर्सपेक्टिव आई जस्ट सॉ सम स्टूपिड किंग्स फाइटिंग एंड दे वर किलिंग ईच अदर एंड देयर ब्लड वाज फॉलिंग ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड द अर्थ वाज रिलिशिंग देयर ब्लड बिकॉज़ शी वाज टायर्ड ऑफ देयर स्टूपिडिटी दिस इज व्हाट आई सॉ I I I didn't see your Pandavas, I didn't see see your your Pandavas, Kauravas, Bhim, Arjun, nothing I saw. I just saw just stupid kings killing each other. Sach kya hai? What is the truth? The Chatur Mukha on top. If you are Jain, go to the Jain temples. They'll always show the image of the Chatur Mukha Jatirthankara sitting right on top, seeing the circle which extends to infinity. It is a very different approach to life. Yeah, they're limited truth through limitlessness. This is Indian wisdom, and it's a very different paradigm. It's a different world view. Dunya darshan karne ka the darshan shastra hai. It's a way of looking at life, and when you start, and there's an external view, there's an internal view. I keep telling people, you want to understand the Ramayana, you must read the Mahabharata. You want to understand the Ramayana and Mahabharata, you have to read the Vishnu Purana. You want to understand Vishnu Purana, you have to read Shiv Purana. You want to understand Shiva and Vishnu Puran? You have to read Brahma Puran. If you understand all these masculine Purans, you have to read Devi Puran or the Tantras. And if you want to understand all of them, you have to read the Vedas. If you want to understand the Vedas, you have to read the Nastika Parampara. This is Nastika Parampara. There is Nastika Parampara. You want to understand Nastika and Nastika Parampara because all of them are bound by karma, rebirth. You have to read scriptures which are about one life. Only then will you understand the Ramayana. because the world will as you expand and as you go higher and higher and higher and higher notions of the chakra will change if you want to stay below you will remain kupa manduka frog in the well frog in the well and chakravarti are one and the same both are inside a well the chaturmukha is watching both of them we have to decide how we want to live our lives we have to decide what do we do with mythology do you want to be right or do you want to expand your knowledge both are valid options if you want to be right you will always be fighting you will always be angry it will never change ye to chalta hi rehta hai revolutions happen revolutions don't happen they keep happening nothing ends or you keep understanding the world and become calmer and gentler and try to make the world a slightly better place at least in your ecosystem and when you do that i think you become a wiser human being and that is what mythology is for today thank you